Okay, a very simple example on any logic. In this video, I'm going to provide the first example on how you can create a separate wear line model in any logic. In any logic, there are various palettes available depending on the license installed and also the additional libraries installed. In this case, you can see the available libraries on, on my version. And <clears throat> this video is referring to the material handling library. You see here the overview of the material handling library. Um, contains various agent types, for example, material items um, used for representing agents um, that move along, for example, a conveyor. So this would, for example, be a box. Um, space markups for representing the actual conveyor, for example. Uh, blocks that uh, are responsible for generating the movement. And then there's also a process modeling library with, for example, sources that creates agents, sinks that destroys agents, and flow controls, etc. And um, the first thing I did was I took the template for a material item, which represents the objects that are moving along uh, a conveyor, so the agents that move along a conveyor in this example. I dragged and dropped it uh, onto the model, the main model, <clears throat> and um, this uh, uh, prompted me, allowing me to create a new custom agent from scratch for a, a, material, a custom material item. So that's what I did. Um, I named it custom box, it opened um, this new uh, <coughs> modeling environment and, and representing eventually the, the class for this custom agent type. Um, and here uh, you could, for example, be adjusting um, the outer dimensions, <coughs> the material item. Uh, the outer dimensions are indicated by these dotted lines. Um, I chose to maintain the original uh, outer dimensions, um, but you could be adjusting them here in the parameter settings. Um, and then I uh, clicked the, the presentation uh, palette and I just added a, a rectangle with white fill and, uh, and black outer lines. And I aligned the rectangle more or less with the outer dimension as indicated by the dotted lines. So that's all what I did here. Uh, just to also show you, you can create custom material items. And uh, then went back to the material handling library. I um, added the conveyor space markup by double clicking the conveyor uh, symbol and then clicking the start point and clicking the and double clicking the end point. <clears throat> and I added a, a source, a convey block, and a sink. Now the source, um, uh, let's start with the conveyor. If I click this conveyor, which represents yeah, the actual conveyor, you could say, um, you could, for example, select um, the uh, material item type that can be moving along this conveyor. I chose the custom box uh, that I just created. Um, I can choose whether this is a roller conveyor, a build conveyor, a fixed cell conveyor. Now this, in this example, is a roller conveyor and a roller conveyor does not allow boxes. Um, or <clears throat> what's special about a roller conveyor is, let's say, a box is here and it blocks the, the exit of the conveyor because uh, the connected conveyor is blocked or the connected station is blocked or something else. Box is moving down, the conveyor can still be uh, moving. Um, if it's a belt conveyor, if the conveyor stops at one point, the entire conveyor stops. This would be a, a belt conveyor. Or if, for example, the box is waiting here, the entire container, uh, the entire conveyor stops. And a fixed cell conveyor, now this would be a fixed cell conveyor, it's like uh, many small belt conveyors. Many small independent belt conveyors. For this example, I'm going to maintain the um, roller conveyor. You can also set kinematics here and you can also define the gap, which is the minimum distance between uh, material items moving along the conveyor. You can also um, trigger certain actions. Yeah, so you can write some Java code here. And um, <clears throat> you can also change the appearance of the conveyor. Okay, now I told um, this conveyor uh, what its kinematics are. I told it that uh, custom boxes are going to be moving along it. I need to add a source now. The source will generate agents, in this case, custom boxes. And I set it to generate custom boxes every 10 seconds. Um, here I told it that, yeah, in fact, I wanted to generate custom boxes. Um, I also told it so here. Um, and then I um, disabled force pushing. Now, force pushing would 
mean that if the connected conveyor is blocked, the source um, would still try to push its agent onto the connected conveyor and the model would throw an error. If I disable um, the setting, the source will not push um, the agent onto the connected conveyor until the conveyor is free. And um, that's what I selected here. So the, the, the weight in this block means that if the source generates an agent, and this agent cannot be moved onto the connected conveyor because the connected conveyor is blocked. The agent is going to stay in the source and wait until the connected conveyor is free. I could also say destroy. That means that if the connected conveyor is blocked, then the source destroys the agent and, and, and it just keeps on with its um, generation cycle. But I'm, I'm going to choose here to wait on this block, but it's not going to be relevant in this example anyways. Okay, that, that's more or less it. Um, then the convey block, this is the, 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 the logic block that's responsible for actually generating the convey movement. And um, I need to tell this block, okay, where are you going to be generating this convey movement? Where is the convey movement going to start? Where is the convey movement going to end? And um, <clears throat> that's here, convey from and convey to. Now convey from, I could choose a conveyor. I did so in this example, I could also choose position on a conveyor or the current position. Um, I take a conveyor in this example and I have to select the conveyor and, and the model. Um, and then I have to tell, okay, are you referring to the beginning of the conveyor or the end of the conveyor? And uh, at the start of the movement, um, the from movement, um, I'm going to uh, click the beginning of the conveyor. And the same I have to do for convey two. So where's the convey movement going to, to end? Uh, or where am I conveying material items to? Um, again, I'm referring to a conveyor and uh, this time to the end of the conveyor. I also have to tell, okay, what am I moving? I'm moving custom, custom boxes. And then there's the sync. I just have to specify in the sync that custom boxes are going to be uh, arriving in the sync and, and the sync will then destroy um, those <coughs> custom, custom boxes arriving. So those agents will be um, push into the sink and the sink will destroy them. And, and that's uh, more or less a model. You can see it running here in the background. Um, okay, it seems I've been running it for quite some time in the background. And uh, set itself up okay so here you see it running as I put it to 10 time uh, real speed um, and yeah you see the model running here every 10 seconds uh, a box a custom box is uh, generating the source moved onto the conveyor line uh, and moved down the conveyor line and then into the sink where it's being destroyed if you look at it closely here um, the source actually creates the the boxes here, not on the conveyor. There's a um, offset setting available in the source that allows you to adjust the actual location where agents are then uh, created. Uh, so I could, for example, also set an offset in the source so that when a box is created, it's actually created on the conveyor. But that's it for now. And in upcoming videos, um, we're going to be looking um, at some additional settings here, specifically for conveyors. but. Um, we're also going to be handling, uh, or we're going to look at other types of material handling, and eventually we will also look at other libraries. We will also look at system dynamics modeling and um, agent-based modeling. So that's that's what what's coming up.